Hi, my name's Neil Davis and I'm the founder of Digital Cloud Training. This video is an excerpt from our upcoming course for the AWS Certified Solutions Architects Associate Certification that is made up almost entirely of hands-on labs. Over 20 hours of practical exercises to give you the knowledge and experience to pass your exam. I hope you enjoy the video and for more information about our courses, check out our social media. In this lab, we're going to create a static website on S3. So you can host a static website in a bucket on S3. You can't use dynamic websites or any kind of server-side scripting. Now let's look at how we do this. So we're going to create a bucket called DCT static website. And then I'm going to go into that bucket and I'm going to upload a couple of files. Now you need an error and an index file. And these are HTML documents. These are very basic, nothing fancy, but uh, just to show you how this works. So I'm going to click on upload. And then what we need to do is we need to enable public access for this bucket. So I have the code here to do that. We're just going to put a bucket policy in here to enable public access. So it enables public read for get bucket objects. Now, if we hit save, we get an access denied. So if you remember, you have to go to disable the block all public access. So we're going to go in here. We're going to disable and confirm. And then we can come back to our bucket policy and put it in. And it's got the correct ARN and click on save. We then go to properties, static website hosting and we enable use this bucket to host a static website. And you can see here the endpoint that we can use. So it's the bucket name s 3 dash website. And then it's got the region name. And we just need to specify what our files are here. So I'm just going to confirm those names. And I'm going to copy this URL to my browser. So let's give this a go. We're going to open up a new tab and I'm going to paste the URL in. And there we go. That's what I was hoping to see. So it just says, hi, this is a static website. So that's the way you can do it. And that's using the URL you just saw, which is an S3 URL. You can also use a custom URL. So let's do that now. To do a custom URL, you actually need to name your bucket the name of your domain name. So mine is dcclabs.com. So that's the bucket I'm going to create. And we're going to go through the same procedure. I'm going to upload my index and my error file. I'm going to go to block public access and switch that off. I'm going to go to bucket, bucket policy. And let me just copy my code in again. And this time I need to change the ARN. So I'm going to copy the ARN of my bucket and paste that in. And we can click Save. And we get the warning. So they're very good now at making sure that it's very, very obvious that you've enabled public access to your bucket. You know, there are warnings all over the place. So we go to Properties and we're going to enable static website again. Just specify the name of your files. And let's copy this URL and click on save. So we should now be able to connect to this using the S3 URL. And sure enough, that works. But what I want to do now is go into Route 53. And we're going to create a record set. And it's going to be an alias. And the alias is going to point towards the bucket. So you can see here we have S3 website endpoints and it's actually found our dctlabs.com. So we click on create. So let's head over to a new tab now and type dctlabs.com. And there we go, we get the index file showing that this is a static website. So that's really it, it's very simple. You just create an alias record for the alias target, which in this case is the website endpoint. Your bucket must be 
the same name as your domain. So in this case, dctlabs.com. There's also a way of doing a redirect if you have www.dctlabs.com as well as people coming directly to dctlabs.com. And there's an article on the AWS website which can walk you through that. And I'll just put that one up on the screen now. So if you want detailed instructions, have a look for setting up a static website using a custom domain. Back to our buckets, I've finished with these now. So I can go in and delete the bucket. And when you delete a bucket, it asks you to enter the name of the bucket. So you have to enter it exactly as it is. And I'm gonna do the same for the dctlabs.com bucket. And then the final thing for cleaning up is just to remove the record set. So that's it for static websites. Just one more thing to note, you can also put a CloudFront distribution in front of S3 so that it can cache your content around the world. And that's something that we're gonna cover in another lab when we get to the CloudFront section.